Okay, this is the uh, series of videos that will show us how to create these steel uh, profiles and then we'll build this um, 3D version of the steel frame. Uh, this was a CAD drawing originally. Um, this is something we'll be looking at in the second part of uh, this module um, where we'll actually set this up again in, in CAD. We'll see the two different ways of creating the same sort of thing and I'll leave it up to you to decide which one you prefer. Um, I will be creating these profiles then saving those um, as components uh, externally bringing them back in and then using those to build this sort of framework. Uh, we'll also put a slab in and some um, reinforcing to the slab or some, some thickening to the slab It's at the column positions. Uh, then we'll go into uh, layout and show you how to set it all up um, properly with the dimensions etc. Okay, it might not be 100% um, the same as the sheet you've got. Unfortunately that's locked on my system in work and I can't get access to it due to the network problems uh, but this should give you a good example of how to set the thing up from start to finish. Okay, I'll just move this off the side so I can see what I'm looking at, and you can't. Then we go into SketchUp. So the first thing we'll do is create um, the profile of the beam. Easiest way to do that is to get your rectangle tool, click at a point, it doesn't necessarily need to be the origin point, but click somewhere, um, and then enter the overall dimensions, which are um, 166.8 by 310.9, so 166.8 comma 310.9 enter. So that's the start. I think I'll just change my style. This is a styles window and if I click on the little house it sees this is my architectural design style which is set up. I'll edit that, take off the end points and the extension points. Just cleans it up a little bit. So when I zoom in get a better cleaner look of it. So this is the overall size of the 305 by 165 by 54 UB. Um, the thickness of the top and bottom uh, flanges is 13.7. So if I use the offset tool, click on the inside of this face, when you hover over the, the plane a little red dot appears on the edge and allows you to then to sort of move your mouse inwards. 13.7, enter. So that's given me sort of a thickness all the way around, but I don't want this side edge or this edge, so I can just move those by using the move tool. That's M on the keyboard and drag those along. Make sure you're on the red axis. If you want to make sure you've locked out on the red axis, get on the red axis, finger on the shift key, locks it out and then you can just move over to that edge. Okay, at this point, if I wanted to, I could erase this edge and this edge by clicking E on the keyboard, E for erase, I might as well do that. It makes no difference, one way or the other. And then I'll draw a line from the midpoint to the midpoint, and you'll see the midpoint snaps, little magenta, sorry, cyan dots, which show you that that's the midpoint. I now want to move this because the thickness of the spacer in between is 7.7. .7. So I want to move this from the original point, is 3.85. So 3.85, enter. And then copy this other piece by clicking on the control key to add to the move selection, 7.7, .7. enter. Okay, so that's give me this. Now this bit hasn't filled in. If I wanted to fill this in, all I'd need to do is draw a line from there to there. Sometimes these things just don't fill in. Nothing to worry about. Just r draw over one of the lines. Make sure you f go from end point to end point and then it'll fill in. And I can kind of select that bit and that bit. Now this is nearly done. I've just got to put the curves in on each of these corners because it's been rolled out. So you get this little sort of curve happening uh, between the spacer and the flange plates. So, using the tape measure tool and clicking on 
an edge. Now sometimes if you click on a midpoint you'll just get a, a dimension line. In this case it's giving me the construction line. If I click there though I just get the sort of measuring bit of it. So be careful when you click on an edge. You need to make sure that the plus sign is appearing. If I just click and there's no plus sign there I won't get the construction line so just make sure that the plus sign is there and you get that by tapping the control key. Then click and drag out and the radius that I'm looking for is 8.9 so 8.9 enter 8.9 there that point that point now there probably are other ways of doing this probably the easiest way as well is to use the circle tool <clears throat> and you see at the bottom here you've got 24 sides um, if I wanted to make this smoother I could up the sides to 48 or bigger than that um, 24 will be fine now because this is a circle I'm going to put my center point of the circle there and then drag up to it intersects this intersection with the grid line and this inside face of the flange. So I click there and click there and that creates that curve. Now it also creates lots of other bits and pieces which you can use the eraser tool to erase and press and hold on the eraser and that will just allow you to draw over these lines and then I can press and hold there and there and that's that bit done. I can also get rid of that one. I still need these for the bottom side and I'll use the circle tool again. I, I will show you a different method actually using the curve tool. Now the sides of the curve tool are 12. That should be fine. I don't click here this time. I click on this point and I click on this point. Now that magenta line tells you that it's an equal distance between sort of this bit and this bit and then if I dra track down this line here you'll see it turning magenta and it'll be tangential to the edge at this point so it's quite intuitive in that respect and then that gives me that curve there and there and just track in until that goes magenta and then again hold your mouse wheel down over those two and then that 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 and that's it done <coughs> so that's the first one I might as well crack on with the other ones now the structural T which I can see off the side of my drawing but you can't is um, 233.7 and 192.8 so I'll do the same thing 233.7 comma uh, 192 oops 192.8 enter so B is 192.8 let's just make sure I've got the right so this is the, the T bit and this is going to be the, the length of it. Um, the thickness on that is 19.6 so I might as well just select this edge and copy this. So control 19.6 enter and then draw a line from the midpoint to there. Now the thickness is 11.4 so that's 5.5 and 5.2, 5.7 so this time I'll do something slightly differently I can't because that's selected so click away to deselect then select that then I can slide this up and down here so I'll push this up on the green axis um, 5.7 enter and then I'll copy it the other way 11.4 so that positions that well it looks like it has just check the sizes my maths 90.7 90.7 yeah it's just a bit of an optical illusion based on the perspective I can get rid of that as well so the um, radius of these ones is 10.2 so if I use my tape measure that's T tape measure by the way 10.2 10.2 oops 10.2 and then I'll go and use a circle command 
for that. So click there, to there, to there, to there. The eraser, and get rid of those, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of these, and this and this, and that. Okay, so that's the T done. Now if I really wanted to rotate this round so it looked the same as the others, I could select it, use the rotate tool, click a point somewhere there, doesn't make any difference, move up vertically, and then bring it round through 90 degrees, and that's that bit set. So that's two of the profiles. Third profile, and I'll just move that off the screen, is the 202 by 203 by 86, and that's a universal column, even though it says a universal beam. So it's 208.8 by 222.3. 208.8. Comma two two whoops two 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 point three enter. The thickness of this bit is twenty point five, so uh offset click twenty point five move tool, that's M drag that out that way that out that way. I'm assuming I've got this right. Two oh eight point eight. Just check that. Two oh eight point eight, yes. Um, the thickness inside is 13, so that's 6.5 mil. So again, midpoint there, and um, M for move, so 6.5, enter. M with the control key pressed to give you a copy, 13. Okay, so again, we'll tidy this up just to give us bit better look at what we're doing. Um, oops, sorry, tape measure tool and the radius on this bit is 10.2 again. So click and drag. Now last time it was set to 10.2 so this time it remembers that. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. But it's locked out on 10.2. Pop the circle in. One, two. Press the wheel, finger on the shift key to pan and there you go, that's the four though, four little soups. Now if you do that, just control Z. If I did that and if I just hit the escape key, it just kind of allows me to start again with my finger still pressed on the wheel. Ah uh, sorry, the left mouse button when I'm doing this. Now it's the wheel and the shift key. And there you go, that's our three profiles ready to be turned into a structural frame. Okay, and we'll look at that in the next video.